Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Adam Balderstone for another episode of Bedrock and Balderstone to talk about I, Claudius, Episode 8, Zeus by Jove. In this episode, uh, Tiberius has a stroke and dies, and Caligula succeeds him. And basically, we get to see just the nightmare rain that, uh, that, that, that is beginning to occur. Uh, a number of things happen. This is a really detail-rich episode, so we'll just talk about those in detail uh, you know, when we have our discussion. But, but the, the, basically, it opens up with him being made emperor, and then we see quite clearly just how mad he is, and Claudius manages to survive by uh, immediately guessing that Caligula wants people to think he's a god, and sadly, uh, Drusilla, uh, uh, Caligula's sister, does not survive because she plays a little too she plays her role as goddess a little too well and <laughs> and and they have to carry out the myth to completion and um uh and and also Claudius's mother commits suicide by the end of this episode it's a, again there's a lot in this in this episode so why don't we just kind of dive right into the discussion here uh Adam what what was your take on on Zeus by Jove yeah, this is this is a fantastic episode. I mean, it kind of veers into it basically veers into horror territory at this point. I mean, there's been dark stuff throughout the whole show, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's an interesting episode too because there's so much dark humor to it too. On top of everything yeah. else, starting starting at the beginning with uh with. Uh, Caligula coming out and giving his big speech that he's the emperor now, and then the, the slave running out to say, "Oh, he's he's still alive!" And uh, really, and he wants his dinner. Ruining the moment, and he wants his dinner and his ring back. But <laughs> and and the other thing about that scene is Caligula not only just gives this big speech, but he he basically lied his ass off. He he he, yeah. he was taught. He said he said that Tiberius said all these wonderful things about him, and 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 he just cre- you know he created this very uh, moving scene that that had no foundation in reality, and and so I think he was immediately fearful that you know well if Tiberius is alive he's gonna he's gonna tell the Senate I didn't say these things and then you know there uh, goes my chances so it, it was an interesting <laughs> scene but you're right there was there was a lot of um, there was a lot of humor throughout the whole episode there's a lot of humor through the series but it really rises to the surface here but it's almost always immediately followed by, or preceded by something terrible and horrifying the the, the yeah. two never seem to exist in isolation and you get you get a lot of that with Caligula you get you also get that in his personality he sort of shifts rapidly from very affable and affectionate towards Claudius to being terrifying and ready to take off his head and he's and and, and that's just sort of like a microcosm of the whole character um and so I, I think it it I don't know it, it's that it's that balance that makes it work because you, you get, you get, you just get, you just feel like you're being throttled between the, the, these extremes in his behavior that are, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 re- it really is effectively done. Uh, yeah. And there's, there's a mix of, I mean, obviously Caligula is a pretty villainous character, but you feel a lot of pity for him too, because he's genuinely, genuinely not a well person. And I, and that really, really comes out in this episode because previously we've seen him and he's always been a sinister and uh, clearly not altogether person, but He's, he's kind of had a handle on his insanity to an extent in the yeah. previous episodes. It's like he's he's crazy, but he's he's in more of a psychopath kind of sense, someone yeah. who's doing these horrible things. Whereas, you know, the, the, the scene where he has his headache in this episode is uh, – is one where he just loses it. He's no longer driving himself yeah. anymore, and he's. It, it's brought up. It's brought up by his sister that you know, even even he's afraid. <laughs> well, and it kind of becomes apparent that maybe prior to this, he did have his madness, as terrible as it was. He did have it slightly under control, perhaps. Yes. And that it's something to do with these headaches. See, and, he, and he mentions. We'll, we'll talk about that whole scene because there's a lot there. But he does mention that oh, the yeah. headaches first started on an evening when he had thought about killing Tiberius. 
Um, you know, and, th- and there's some question of whether that scene really was yeah, true or not. But I know the whole thing. It, it felt like he was inventing a story as he went. It's like you have to wonder if the scene happened at all. If it was, I mean, like you know, the scene of him going into the bedroom. He's, I was there to avenge my father, and it's like none of that. Well, <laughs> none of that holds any water. It's like it, it felt like it felt like you know he just. You know, he had the idea of oh, I should have killed him when I had the chance. Then he just invented a story to go yeah. along with that. Was the, my impression of that? Though the one thing that tells me there might be a grain of truth to it is he said, "I remember now that was the night the headache started." So it makes me think he's at least drawing on something that might have occurred. But it probably was not maybe. not the situation that he paints. Like maybe he had the idea of killing Tiberius at one point in order to take. To, to 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 quicken the uh you know his his ascension to 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 the emperor position and and so uh, oh yeah i'm sure he thought about that but uh I, i'm just saying that the particulars of the scene and, and the headache thing too that was one of the things that really made me feel it was invented it's like he's like oh my headache oh yes and i was having a headache then too. oh i get you okay that's you know, another way to, it's yeah. like it's just the way the way it's like you know the pain of it made him think yes i'll add this but, to the story as well there was a he, headache he did gen in, in 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 the real history. He did get sick and go into some kind of like they they always are sort of you know having different theories on what it was, but some kind of you know state that was probably a brain fever of some kind or related. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not saying the yeah. headaches weren't real. I'm saying the idea that that he had this first headache the time he went in to kill Tiberius is is what I but, what I'm saying is is probably probably something he just made up on the spot but the thing that you often hear about that is that he had this personality shift following it so that's why i'm uh yeah i'm keying in on this idea that maybe like you were saying he, he could have had a handle on the insanity prior to the and then like i don't know some case of meningitis or some something who knows what it is but something going on with his like the overall impression you get in this scene is that he is a, a victim of an illness uh, on top of yeah the, i mean we know that he's also predisposed to really horrific behavior but like there's clearly like this is like clearly mental illness going on with this guy this is not um, yeah this is not normal normal stuff and uh and 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 so the scene opens with him basically selecting his next console which is kind of an important plot point over the episode because he selects claudius Mm -hmm. and he wants claudius uh, as his first act of co-console to uh because it's a it's a dual position it's he he, he's serving as console and then he has to select a co-console and uh, Claudius's first duty as co-consul will be to uh, order statues of um, of his brothers for uh, for uh, you know a festival coming up, and I, I think and also um, uh, you know after that matter is matter is settled, uh, he he uh, this that's when he goes into the story that of him nearly killing Tiberius, and it's a very lengthy speech that he gives i i tried to take notes of it i I wouldn't it would be uh it would it would be very distracting i think for me to read everything that he said but just just you know just so you know it's very long um Mm -hmm. but uh but what when he in the story that he tells he says that he went there to to avenge his family like you said and then he heard the voice of augustus and augustus stayed his hand and augustus says great grandson stop to kill would be impious and then he says, oh, God, Augustus, I cried. Should I not avenge them at the risk of being shunned by all men as a parasite? <laughs> and he just goes on and on with this. And then he he basically is talked out of it by Augustus, who says that, um, you know, let him suffer. He's going to he's going to suffer torment anyways. So just let him suffer. And then one day you will be you know, you will enter into the bosom of Augustus after a glorious reign. And and then this is when I think, um, you know, he 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 actually uh uh falls on the ground and says father help me like that that's there's a point in the scene where he just collapses from the pain of the headaches and yeah. it's it's a it's galloping in his head that he hears and it's a pain um and it's just a really tremendous scene and over the course of the scene he's also he's like he's repeating himself like he discovers that he asks Lentulus how much is left in the treasury and Lentulus tells him oh well you know there's only this much because Tiberius had so much debt and then he he loses his train of focus and he starts talking about something else. And then moments later, he comes back to Lentulus and says, how much is in the treasury? And it's clear that he, he you know, he, he doesn't remember having the conversation. And it's it's a very it's just very obvious something's wrong with the guy. And the way that, but the way that they play it up is it's interesting because 
you know, you, you have some sympathy for him because clearly there's something going on with him, but he's still like, I've, and I've said this over and over again, but he just still manages to be so terrifying and, and you still want him thoroughly dead. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you want you. Um, and so over the course of the episode it's really kind of Claudius figuring out the right, the right, uh, uh, tone to set with his nephew. And, uh, and so, yeah, well, I, I like uh, Claudius's initial reaction to being confronted with just how crazy he is. He goes and talks, talks to Herod, and it's like, oh, this is fantastic. He's he's completely, completely insane. Therefore, they're going to have to get rid of him as being the emperor. You know, they're going to have to lock him up, and we will get the republic back. This is all perfect. And instead, everyone plays along with this yeah. crazy crazy act that he's doing and well, and he should know that because he plays along too like when like the whole yes. thing that happens is after Caligula collapses he falls into a coma and he awakens like days later and and uh and claudius is told that he wants to see him so he goes in and and caligula just has this look on his face and he and he and he says uh you know he says i I, 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 I've never really been sick. I've been going undergoing a metamorphosis. And then he, he says, oh, well, can I inquire about the nature of the... And he, and he says it was like giving birth. It was, it was like a mother giving birth to herself, is how he describes it. And then, and then when uh, Claudius asks about the nature of it, he says, well, isn't it obvious? And you know at that moment, like if Claudius answers wrong, He's probably a dead man. Like this is this is yeah. one of several tests that Caligula sort of presents to him, and and he immediately gets it. He says, "You have become a god," and 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 it, and it and it completely saves Claudius. You know, it's it's the th- it's 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 his knowledge of myth and history, and it's just his well learned nature in general is the thing that helps him survive over the course of, 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 of this episode and the next episode. Of and course, it, it's also the thing that brings about one of the darkest things in the episodes, too, is because Claudius is the one that puts the whole idea in his head about, oh, you know, that's right, Zeus, you know, cut out the womb and, and ate it. I mean, the, the, sorry, if he doesn't ate it, and then he then, you know, it burst out of his head. And, you know, that, that whole horrible thing that happens at the end was all because Claudius yes. just put it's like the whole time Claudius says, like, don't don't say that to a crazy well, person. Well, and don't it's say any of that. And it's funny because like you can like Claudius is like the most well suited to being in this position because he knows so much about the gods. And he's genuinely trying to like, sur- you know, he's trying to answer. Uh, Caligula has some genuine curiosity about this because he now thinks he's a god. And yeah. he's coming at it from an unusual angle because he was reared in his, his religious understanding of the world is really kind of shaped by Martina, the um, the poisoner woman from several episodes back. And and he uh, uh, and he and he's got it. He's got this idea that he's uh, that 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 Zeus is a superior deity to Jupiter and that Jupiter is just a pale imitation of Zeus. And and so he feels like he's sort of the the real incarnation of the Greek of the Greek deity. And, and so he's asking all these questions and then that's sort of where Claudius sort of is like, Oh yeah, but this, you know, this is, and you know, this is how it happened. And then he describes the whole, you know, eating the fetus from the womb thing. And, uh, uh, you know, and then Caligula admits to, to killing his father. And, uh, and, you know, Claudius is sort of both trying to get accurate information and also please his nephew and pretending he's not horrified by this information. Um, And so it's a very interesting scene to watch where he's like, oh, you know, it's marvelous. How did you pull it off? And he, you know, he, and he, and he, and he, and he, uh, and he tells him, he says, even Jove, you know, didn't kill, you know, didn't, wasn't able to do what I did. And, you know, I, I killed not only my natural father, but my adoptive father, Tiberius as well. And, you know, know, uh, so it's just, uh, I don't know. It's a very, um, uh, interesting scene and actually i guess maybe maybe the scene that caligula is describing to the senate that he's painting is this you know him in the night can you know contemplating murdering his father his uh his uh adoptive father tiberius maybe that's the scene with macro is the scene that he's actually thinking of and maybe that's where the headache started but but we don't know you know it's 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 it's, it's sort of left to us to guess but like yeah. you said he comes out of that scene and he goes to Herod and he says, oh, we'll have the Republic back. You know, he's crazy. <laughs> um, and the guy who ends up really turning it uh, in uh, when like ba- Macro goes and announces that the, 
the the metamorphosis. And number one, one of the interesting things about this scene to me is is the way he pronounces metamorphosis. He pronounces it metamorphosis. Yes. Um, and I think yeah, the idea there is Macro probably doesn't quite know what the word even means. He's just repeating it. Um, and so, but but he's a dutiful. He's trying to be a dutiful right hand man. We know he's not going to last that long in that position. <laughs> but but he uh, he basically tells the Senate the Senate to you know Caligula's a god and you better you know I know that sounds ridiculous to some people but you better play ball is kind of is is kind of what he's saying to them and you know he's he's not being that direct about it but he's being about as direct as you can and Lentulus makes the argument to the Senate that. Uh, you know, you know, hey, we, you know, we worship Augustus after he's dead. Why not one of his grandsons, you know, while he's alive? Mm. And and earlier when uh, when Mac, when when Caligula first fell ill, Lentulus went to Macro and said, you know, I'm praying for him. I, I offered myself in my own life in exchange, uh, you know, and 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 so again, we have somebody who sort of, you know, plants this seed that has a horrible <laughs> consequence for them down the road. Um, and, and so when, when Caligula arrives restored before the Senate, he goes right up to Lentulus and, and Lentulus says, you know, oh, you know, I'm glad that you're well. And he says, I, I, you know, I, I was praying for you. He said, yes, but I heard your prayer was a very special prayer. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and Lentulus, uh, is a little confused. And then Caligula says, well, I'm still here and you are, and so are you, but we oughtn't both be here. Uh, we should give the gods the things we promised them. And, uh. And then, you know, the, uh, Lentulus ends up having to commit suicide uh, at, with Macro basically watching him and make sure, making sure he does so. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's just, it's just a, an endless stream of all these. It's, it's, it's amazing how many little beats are in this episode with Caligula's madness. We also have the recurring cough of Jamelus, his co-heir, oh, yes. because Tiberius, yes. he made Caligula primary heir, but in the event of some kind of you know, illness or death or whatever, uh, Jamelus is the co-heir, um, which was actually a little bit smart of Tiberius because it doesn't, it doesn't, require that Caligula kill Jamelus. It doesn't create that kind of situation, but it does create uh, a backup. Um, and, and, and the real history of this is actually much more complicated. I, I remember there was a book that, uh, that got into the death of Jamelus and that there was probably some kind of conspiracy around Jamelus uh, to make him the emperor. And, and so in the show and in a lot of the stories we hear, it's the coughing, but... You know, at the end of the episode, when when he has Jamelus' head cut off, uh, you know, in the, in the series at least, it's it's for the purposes of stopping this this cough that's annoying Caligula. Um, but uh, but the other big thing that happens this episode is Antonia uh, uh, decides to commit suicide, uh, and, and and basically she decides to commit suicide because she realizes nobody's willing to do anything to you know to stop Caligula, and she's trying to talk. Claudius and she's like can't you poison his food and 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 he's sort of you know you know uh, he, he he's either too loyal to his nephew or he's too uh too cowardly and doesn't want to put himself at any risk but either way the you know uh uh Antonia is um is uh she's just convinced that that, that Rome has gone to hell and and she decides to take her own life. Um, and so I don't know. Did you have any thoughts on that scene? Or yeah, uh, no. That's the. I mean, for one thing, I I think it is just mainly Claudius is just unwilling to to go around poisoning someone and take that risk. Because I think mm -hmm. you made a great point earlier that Claudius is expecting everyone to go. Oh, this guy's crazy. Let's lock him up. But and he's surprised when everyone goes along with it. But that's exactly what claudius was doing he yeah. they're they're acting just like he did and uh so yeah he just doesn't he's he's not willing to uh to take that kind of risk i i, I don't think I, I i just don't think he'd be he'd be capable of it yeah i, th and, I think you're right i think you're right and uh but yeah the, the scene with his mother is fantastic that's uh just her uh uh, you know, just, she's she's just done with it. She just doesn't want anything more to do with this horrible story, and she's just gonna walk out at this point. 
Well, she even kind of apologizes him for being unloving to him, but then she kind of doubles down on her, you know, how she just, you know, she just could never, you know, she, she, she just never was able to do so. And that's that. And, you know, she, she, she kind of, uh, and then she ultimately rebukes him by having the slave cut off her hand after her suicide rather than Claudius, yeah. even though he was supposed to do it. Um, so it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a very fitting scene for, her and, uh, and so, you know, I, I guess, uh, it's kind of the last great matron in the series is uh, is gone at this point too, so it's significant. Um, you know, we don't, I don't think there's anybody that really rises to take her place. She sort of, you know, sort of replaces Livia as the matron in the series in a way. Um, yeah, well, I think I think I, I'm trying to think. Is there? I don't. I think she's the last. To la- is, is she the last person left for who was who was around at the beginning of the show too? You know, aside from of course, you know. I mean, is there is there anyone else still around from the the Augustus era at this point? I don't believe so, but I could be I could be mistaken. Um, yeah, yeah, but because uh, I mean, obviously I mean, it's obviously Claudius is in the first episode because he's telling the story, but it's. Uh, I mean, know, it's now it's now that. definitely Claudius's generation. Like now, this is Claudius's generation for sure, and all the people that were adults when he was a kid are seem to be gone. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is a, it's a pretty clean sweep, <laughs> and and I mean there's there's barely anyone left from Claudius's generation even, so it's uh it's, he still has it's, Herod, he still has Herod. That's what I was saying, barely, and mm-hmm. Herod isn't even a Roman, which is but the only reason he can survive is he's just this guy on the edge that generally isn't paid much attention to. He's 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 irrelevant. <laughs> Though Caligula takes interest in him. He does say, I want I, have, I want to speak to you about something. And it's probably oh, pretty yeah. obvious yeah. what he might want to speak to him about. Um, you know, with the sort of matters that Caligula might now be concerned with. Mm-hmm. Um but uh but the the the, the episode ends with uh with Drusilla uh being murdered by Caligula. She uh she is uh, there's a scene with them at the temple where he where she tells him that she's pregnant with his child and she's playing up to the whole idea that she's you know a goddess and and throughout the episode Caligula is sort of tormented by the possibility that this child might be more powerful than him just like the myth that Claudius was telling him about and, yeah and so he 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 tells her that he, he he basically has redone his whole room to look like Olympus and he he uh he chains her to the I think above a bed or a chariot, like some kind of divine chariot contraption. Well, was that his room? I mean, because he said they were connecting that to the palace. I got the impression he just kind of took over a temple and uh, it might have been that this was it, his home now. Yeah, I don't remember what the exact room was, but yeah, and he, and he did do that. He did connect it. He, he connected the temple to the palace by a bridge, and then he was going to hold his audiences in the temple. But I, I thought this was a room. But either way, there's a either door, way. which is the important thing because Claudius is banging on it the whole time. And, yeah. And, and he he chains her up and he 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 cuts open the stomach and takes the baby. You don't, you don't see any of this. You just see him take out the knife and he says, you know, there'll be no pain. I'm sure of it. And you did you did see it in the original version of the show. Did it's, you? Uh, I have I have vague memories of watching. Are this you sure that you? Are you sure though? Maybe you just remember because they painted the picture of it. So no, because it's online that this was it's a deleted scene. It's like the only difference with the current oh. version is that 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 it was it was only shown in the original BBC version. It was never shown oh. in the American version. Oh, that's interesting. But, and he, anytime it was even aired in Britain again, it was never. Did they lose the footage of it, or is again. it? I I I don't know if they lost the footage or if it was just that it was so disturbing. I actually that, find uh, it really effective without the. Uh without showing it oh it doesn't need it i mean yeah i agree it works either way but uh i i do remember remember that from the first one but like i said i I look it was something that came back to me when i was uh when i was i was doing a little research as we were watching the show i'm like you know what's i was looking at the different versions of the show and the you know as i'm watching the acorn version it's like well it's missing it's missing the footage of you know the uh the fetus being cut Mm -hmm. out and Okay, because so, I don't think the other version that I have, or the VHS versions, had it either. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I don't just... think you see the act, but you see the some of the aftermath of the act. Is okay, what I think you see the you see the the the, uh, the child on the floor is uh, what you see. But uh, but either way, once he's done, he goes to the door, and Claudius is banging on it, and he just looks at Claudius, and he says, "Don't go in there. Don't yeah. go in there." He changes his like the tone of there. 
in a very <laughs> interesting way. Um, but it's uh, and he's just got blood all over his mouth. You you know exactly what happened. And uh, and Claudius peers inside, and that's the end of the episode. Um, but it was, I mean, a very dramatic episode, and it and it's just very interesting to see that he and Drusilla both employ the same strategy, and it just blows up in the face of Drusilla, probably because she doesn't know the legends as well as Claudius does. Claudius yeah. knows how all that might play out, and so he's at least aware when he does assume the role of a deity or when he does play into. Um, and I, I don't think we see him assuming any uh, godly roles until next um, next episode. But 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 he at least knows enough to ch- to, to to steer it in the right direction. Um, and Claudius? she's just huh? Claudius. Claudius. Yeah. Well, he's the one that steers the. Uh, he's not really the one no. that steers towards Drusilla getting. Killed. No, but the thing is, one. What I'm saying is, once he realizes like how thorough this this is. Uh, yeah. I, I think like you, he. Like, do you, I don't think... Okay, so, like, the whole thing with Drusilla that's going on is she's supremely confident that she's going to survive. You can tell. Like, sure. she's, you know, she's strolling around acting... You know, because she knows, oh, he thinks I'm his sister. He thinks I'm a goddess. And I, you know, and I... I you know, so she, she feels protected is the sense you get. I don't think... I think Claudius, at that point, if he were her, would have realized, oh, no, I'm playing the role of somebody who's going to have their womb cut out. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, oh, I think, yeah, I think yeah. it would have dawned on him much faster than it... You know, never dawned on her. Um, but, uh, no, no. Well, I, the question is too. I think she was starting. I mean, she, you know, they're taking some kind of weird drug or something at the end too. Like in the last scene, we last scenes we see her. So it's like, I kind of get the impression she's kind of totally buying into the whole act. You know, by the end too. I'm, I'm like, I'm not. It's kind of. It's kind of gray how much she's actually acting by the end yeah well she so, does say uh, to claudius like sometimes he confuses me for this goddess and that goddess and you know so she kind of i think she kind of knows but like she's sort yeah, the, the, yeah but the drug is having true. the drug is having enough of, a, of an effect that it almost doesn't matter because she clearly you know is enjoying playing the role um, that's true that that would be the way i'd put it but, but yeah and it's an interesting discussion because you brought up uh i believe in the last episode when uh caligula and claudius meet in the uh in the market or wherever and uh it's you know and, and how they're both playing an act there's so much about people playing you know cover roles in this and it's like you know it's it, it's it's like this is this is an episode where people kind of where where you know caligula just completely you know we've had we've, like, she's playing a role and she she you know knows claudius you're playing your role and <laughs> yep. and, and the caligula's like reached this point where he's had this role he's played but he's not playing it anymore he just is the role yeah he's been yeah. playing because you brought up last episode how much is he playing up his insanity just to make himself seem harmless so that he isn't isn't taken out of the picture by anybody but yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's an interesting angle on the whole series. No, and it's uh, and 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 it's um, and and the role thing is interesting too because I mean this is a side note, but I wanted to mention there's a, a Ravenloft character named Ivan Delisnia, who's a Dark Lord of Ravenloft. I know this is people that yeah. aren't gamers might not know about this, but but he's based on Caligula, and that's one of his defining features is this uh, tendency to to adopt different roles, and that clearly I think mm. the character was I think the character was taken right from I Claudius basically they make a lot of changes but a lot of the details like the incestuous relationship with the sister the theatrics the the presentation of the character looks a lot like uh John Hurt presentation yeah. of the character um and so you know I just I, I was uh I was I was um I just did want to mention that for the gamers that if you if you're a Ravenloft fan check out Ivan Delisnia because he definitely is a connection to 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 this version of Caligula um, and I think we, especially in the next episode when it really gets amped up to 10, you know, <laughs> like this, yeah, believe I, it or not, I... this is not the height of the insanity. <laughs> uh, this... Yeah. Things are just getting rolling. Um, but yeah, I know this is, it was, it's, it's, this is one of my favorite episodes. I think only perhaps exceeded by the following episode, uh, you know, which we'll get into next time. Um, but uh, and and again, I think I think a lot of what really makes it work is the nephew uh, uncle relationship that they have, and just sort of the 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 blade edge that Claudius is walking on. And and again, I think I think I think a lot of it is Claudius's own 
skill at evading being killed. But I also think there's a part of Kalia that does not want to kill Claudius. And so I think ultimately when he makes his decisions, there's like many scenes, I don't know how many, where he's actively deciding is he going to kill Claudius or not. And uh, and by the end of the scene, he inevitably does not do so. And I, I think I think he just doesn't want to is the other part of it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely. I mean, he he doesn't want to kill Claudia, so he can always come up with a reason not yeah. to. So and he's, it's uh, and he's fully capable of killing people he's affectionate towards. He's no, he's very affectionate towards Drusilla, obviously, and he kills her. Um, but again, it's not out of a desire to kill her; it's a desire to stop the baby from. Uh, challenging him in the future and yeah well it's it's even even weirder than that he's bought into the idea of athena being born from zeus's head so it's like he's he's going to if he's got blood on his mouth and everything so he's clearly been trying to eat this thing yeah and it's like expecting it to then burst forth from his head and of course her being a goddess it's not going to kill her because she's immortal yeah so he can he can cut her open that'll cool. be fine and it's it's i mean that's why it's really it, you know if if he were killing her, that would be horrible in of itself. But the fact that he kills her without even believing he's going to kill her is yeah. what what really amps up the horror in this scene. Well, and when he said when he does that, he says, you know, we are immortal gods, and you hear the sound of the galloping horses. And I think they even double track his voice for that line, and it creates a really cool effect because um, it's kind of like it's like you sort of are popped right into his head and you can sort of yeah. sense his insanity um, and I, I thought that really worked and I think also the, the thing that's interesting about this episode is there's a moment I think when he first becomes emperor and he makes uh, Claudius his, con- his co-consul he says to Claudius I'm going to move you into the palace I have a whole wing of suite set up for you and and he says, you know, I, I, you know, he talks about like the, like basically, he's like, you know, the family is important. I, I love my family; they're very dear to me. I forget the exact line, but it's like kind of played as like, a, like he says it, but you also know that he means something else by it. Both like his, yeah. his weird relationship with his sister, and just sort of his ability to, you know, you know, uh, uh, sort of go, you know, you know, swing between affection and cruelty. But, but there is, I think. You know, if you move, pull aside all of his madness and stuff, there's genuine affection for his family there, and, and and no character receives it more than Claudius. Like Claudius is the person that we see him showing, aside from Drusilla, Claudius is the character that gets the most like actual affection from Caligula. Um, and so I just think it's interesting because it feels like there's this sincere relationship underlying a lot of this stuff, which is, you know made much more chaotic by the madness but the yeah. the the there is real uh you know familial connection between him and claudius um and so yeah it, that's that's what makes caligula such a disturbing character is that he's he's so capricious that it's like oh he can love you but you doesn't make you safe in any way yeah, whatsoever yeah. if anything it if anything it, it's it puts you in a more dangerous position it's better just to be someone he doesn't even notice yeah yeah no, that's true. That's definitely true. Um, so again, you know, the, again, this is like this is the this episode and the next episode are basically like the high points of this series. So uh, probably not doing it justice, but it's it, the, the, it, if if you want to see uh, just great villainy on on television, this is this is I think the best example of it. Um, without a doubt, he and Livia are my two favorite villains. Uh, and it just, you know, it's rare to see a great villain in a single series or movie to get two, and, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. is, is amazing. So, um, and, and, and again, you know, John Hurt's uh, a great actor, but I don't, think, I don't think you've really seen all of his work unless you've seen him play Caligula in this show. Then, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, like, like I say, he's got many, many, many great performances. I mean, he, he, anything he's in, he's fantastic in, but this is, this this is exceptional even by his standard. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> this this is definitely a great performance. So um, so yeah. So we'll let everybody go because it's uh, we're getting up on the forty minute mark and uh you know we 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 uh, I think we've we've discussed everything about the episode and we'll have a lot more to discuss next episode when we uh when we continue with the Caligula storyline. Uh, and in case people haven't heard, uh, we have House of Paper Shadows out on RPG now. It's a sort of wuxia dungeon horror adventure. 
uh, it's it's uh, I, I, I have the print copy right here and it looks really marvelous so I would encourage people to go check it out and we'll be back on probably not this Sunday but sometime early next week to discuss the next episode and this Friday we're going to talk about the Marshall Club on Wusha Weekend so we have a lot of stuff coming up I hope people will check out the channel we have a lot of things on this channel by the way if you like this show go check out the other things that we talk about because we have a really big range of topics and we also have a patreon page for wusha weekend which we can always use supporters from so feel free to check out the wusha weekend uh patreon page which we always link and until next time we will talk to you later